Hello and welcome to the Success Bytes series. Today, we'll be talking about Network Engine on Cisco Secure Endpoint. During the session, we will discuss Network Engine and what kind of threats it protects against. We will take you through a live demo and show you how to modify policy in the Secure Endpoint console and how to enable Network Engine. Policy creation and management is the heart of Secure Endpoint policies. It controls all configurable aspects of the connector function. It is important to ensure that all newly created policies are created for the current and future organizational structure in mind. When you open a policy, it will open modes and engine page. Each engine will have conviction modes that specify how the connector responds to suspicious files, network activity, and processes. Secure endpoint connectors include different types of engine, and they're listed on this page. Each engine is designed to protect against a specific threat vector. Today we will focus on network engine and show you how it allows you to flag or block suspicious network activity. Let's talk about how the network engine works. It uses a kernel level view into network IO that allows blocking or alerting the network activity tracked back to the initiating process. It is available on Windows, Linux, and macOS devices. It relies on Cisco Talos Intelligence IP reputation data for blocking of connections to known domains and URL, outbound and inbound TCP and UDP connections. This engine is great at detecting and blocking command and control sites. It is recommended that network monitoring is enabled for endpoints that do not have a high network load required. This should be enabled for primarily workstations and some servers without a need for high volume of network traffic. There are three conviction modes available to specify how the connector responds to suspicious network activity, so we have Block, Audit, and Disable. When you select Block, the endpoint connector will block and reports malicious network connections. If you use blocking as the detection action, Secure Endpoint provides an additional option that will allow connector to terminate the parent process of any connection to a malicious host if the process originated from a file with an unknown disposition. Additionally, you can also create and use your own IP block list that contains IP addresses that you would like to detect and block. When you select Audit, the connector will report malicious connections, but will not block it. Lastly, when you select Disable, the connector does not monitor activity for the network connections. Let's walk through you a quick demo to show you how you can configure Network Engine. To access the protection engines, you need to go to the Policies page. Select Management and then Policies to be taken to the Policy Creation and Configuration page. From here you can create, duplicate and delete the policy. In this case, I will modify the policy by clicking an existing policy named Protect and then click Edit. You will be taken to the Modes and Engines page. Conviction mode specifies how the connector responds to suspicious files, network activity, and processes. There are several conviction modes possible. These are Audit, Quarantine, Block, and Disabled. Please go through every engine on this page and modify your desired configuration based on your environment and requirements. On the right-hand side, you'll see the recommended settings if you wish to use them. Since this video is about Network Engine, I'm going to put Network Engine to block as an example. To access additional option for Network Engine, I will click on Advanced and Network Cap. In here we can observe that you have additional options. You can choose to terminate and quarantine the process. This option will allow the connector to terminate the parent process forming any connections to malicious hosts if the process originated from a file with the unknown disposition. You also have a blocked list data source option. This enables you to select the what type of IP block list you want the connector to use. From here, you can select three types of sources. If you select custom, the connectors will only use the IP block list that you have added to the policy. If you choose Cisco, your connectors will only use the Cisco intelligence feed to define malicious sites. The Cisco Intelligence feed represent IP addresses determined by Cisco Talos that have a poor reputation. 
The custom and Cisco option will allow you to use both the IP block list that you have added to the policy and Cisco intelligence feed. Let me show you how you can define the custom IP block list. To specify the IP block list, please click Outbreak Control and then IP block and allow list. Choose the block list that you have may have created earlier under Outbreak Control's network section, which we'll revisit in just a second from the network section in the Outbreak Control menu. And once you're done, please click Save button. Now you have enabled the network engine in a policy. You will get a confirmation here showing that you have modified the policy. If you haven't created an IP block list before, let me show you how you can do that. Please click Outbreak Control. Go to the network section and click IP block and allow list. Then create IP list and give it a name. In my case, I will give it demo blocking list. Specify the action you want to take like block or allow. Then from here, you can add single IP address, IP blocks in CIDR notation or specify IP addresses with port numbers. For simplicity, I'll just select a single address. Click save when you're done. Congratulations! You just modified an existing policy by enabling the network engine. Thank you for watching this demo. In this demo, we walked through modifying a policy by enabling Network Engine. We also configured additional options that dictates the Network Engine behavior such as the Terminate and Quarantine. We also went through creating an IP block list that your connector will use in the policy for blocking the IP addresses of your choosing. Please revisit these sections at the timestamp if you wish to review the steps. This concludes our modifying the policy and enabling network engine demo. For more information, we recommend to sign up for the following Ask the Expert sessions and continue conversation in secure endpoint protection Cisco community. We hope you enjoyed this short video from the Success Bytes series. Thank you for watching.